Hello everyone, Justin here from JSG Watches and today we have a 1950s Waltham watch. Um, and once we put this thing on the time grapher, we can see that this one is an absolute mess. So the plan for today, we're going to strip this one down, give everything a clean, oil it up, put it back together, give it another check and hopefully get this thing running a bit better. So whilst I'll do the basics and I'll take this, I'll take this movement out of the case, let's do a little research on Waltham Watch Company. Who are they? Are they still around today? So doing a bit of a Google search, Waltham Watch Co, they're an American company actually. Um, operated from 1850 to 1957. And they actually declared bankruptcy in 1949. So one question I would ask is, why do they continue operating? From 1949 they declared bankruptcy, but they, they continue to operate until 1957. So a bit more digging, it turns out that they actually continued operating after 1949 to clear some of their old stock and in an attempt to revive the business. Um, and one, one way they tried to revive the business was to import in cheaper Swiss movements, so, which is where this one comes into play. So this one, when we open it up, we can see the movement is actually stamped with ST1686, which is definitely one of the cheaper Swiss made movements. So the plan is to take this thing apart and see if it's just old age and lack of servicing that's causing it to run like a dog, or if there's anything plainly obvious when, we, when we're dismantling it. The movement is now out of the case, and I'm gonna transfer it over to this movement holder, which just makes it a bit easier to keep the movement in a fixed position whilst we're, whilst we're working on it. As I do this, I'll give you a bit of my background. This. This is actually only the second watch I've taken apart. Um, so this could go horribly wrong, or it could go surprisingly well, we have no idea yet. Uh, but I've always been interested in watchmaking videos online, um, and I'm quite, I'm a mechanical engineer by training, so everything mechanical does appeal to me. And I did a four hour workshop where I, where I live, and I, I loved it. Um, so once I finished that, I actually bought a toolkit and I bought some I bought some cheap watches just to just to learn really. So this is the second watch I'm learning on. So everything I'm doing here is new to me. And with everything being new to me, you're going to find throughout the video that I don't know my way around a watch too well, and it is all a learning experience. Um, I do know the basics, but things like what parts are called. I have no idea. I have a cheat sheet in front of me just to just to prompt me what some things are called, but bear with me if my watch vocabulary is not the greatest. It's all a learning experience and hopefully with time I'll pick this up. Um, but as I mentioned, this is this is a cheap watch, just something for me to learn and hopefully improve my watchmaking skills. Anyway, enough about me and back to the watch. So what we have here is I am letting down the, the power. This is a mechanical watch. So the way the, the watch is powered is you have to manually wind this one up. And inside there's a main spring in the, in the main barrel. And what I did there is I just, I just released the energy from the main spring just to make sure that I don't damage anything whilst I'm removing. I don't want anything to fly off or anything to get damaged whilst disassembling. And what I can see here is there seems to be some magnetism there, see that screw just stuck to the screwdriver. Um, and I don't know if that's the watch that's magnetized or my screwdriver that's magnetized, but that's that's gonna need to be addressed uh, because doing a bit of research, that can actually, magnetism of a watch can actually make a watch run like what we saw on the time grapher. So maybe it was just a case of magnetism. Let's find out. Let's just continue and see what we can, see what else we can find. So we've removed the three screws for this gear train bridge this large piece of metal, the piece that said Waltham Watch Co on it. Uh, and the, the that bridge just acts to hold all of these cogs. All these cogs have tiny pivots that need to be held in, in position. And that bridge has, normally it would be jeweled and normally, normally you would see sort of some purple or red jewels to hold the pivots in place. But that one just had some drilled holes. So it's just metal on metal. So the jewel in a watch is actually it actually serves a purpose and it's more for like a low friction surface for all the rotating parts to, to rest against. So this one being a cheaper movement, there were no jewels on that bridge. It was just direct drilled holes. 
But now that that bridge is off, we can see more inside this watch and see what makes this thing work. Here I'm removing the ratchet wheel, which is connected to the, to the main barrel. So the main barrel's got the main spring. So it's what, when you manually wind this watch through your hand with the crown, it transfers that energy through to the crown wheel into the ratchet wheel and then the ratchet wheel to the to the main barrel so now now we've got the um the crown wheel off the ratchet wheel off we can take off this little bridge it's only held in in place with two screws but first i'll take off the 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 click first so the click is just what prevents the ratchet wheel from unwinding in the in the wrong direction so when you wind the watch up it keeps the power stored into the the spring below instead of winding it up and then the, the power automatically unwinding. I'll unscrew these two screws and then we can take this barrel bridge off and see the, the, the main barrel underneath. Now the two screws are out. You will see I'm using a screwdriver here just to just to lever the the bridge up, just to to make it a bit easier to remove actually. And then I'll use the tweezers to to pick it up and set it aside. Which this one's been a bit fiddly, it's been a bit more tricky than, than I would expect, but let's give it a few more wiggles and there we go, yeah, it comes off in the end. So underneath you can see the sort of the brass looking wheel there. That's the main barrel. Um, that's the one that holds the main spring. And you'll also see that every every part that I remove, because I'm not too familiar with the watch, every every part every part I remove, I'm putting it in front of me and I'm I'm lining them up. So all of the components, I'm lining the component and the screws together just so that when when I finish disassembling everything, I'll take photos of everything. I have done one, I've got the video to look back on as, as a reference, and two, I'll just um, and two, I'll, I'll take a photo of all the all the parts and all the corresponding screws, so that when we go to put this thing back together, hopefully I don't forget where anything goes. Um, hopefully we can get it back, the way it come apart. But we'll see, we'll see. There was another bridge that actually I removed there. I'm not sure what that was for, but it just went over this centre wheel, the centre wheel that I'm removing now. Once that's removed, we can remove the main the main barrel. So that's looks in good condition, um, but we won't know. We, we'll give it. We'll open it up, see how it looks. Here we have this is the escape wheel. So in a watch, you've got some components that, for me anyway, there's from what I was when I did my workshop, they said there's three components you need to be really careful careful about. One is the escape wheel, which I just removed. One is the, the pallet fork, which is what I'm removing now. So that's the bri the pallet bridge. And we've got the pallet fork just underneath. And the third is the, the balance, the one that I removed near the beginning. And the main reason is the pivots on these three components are very, the pivots are almost the size of a hair. So they're, they'd be quite easily damaged. And then you've got to think that they're, they're sandwiched between the main plate of the watch and, and a bridge. So if you were to try and clamp the bridge down whilst the pivot wasn't lined up it could it very it could very easily damage it which is what we don't want to do because if you do damage one of the pivots there's one of two things that will happen the watch the watch will either not run very well or it won't run at all so the plan is to try and try and make the watch run better after you service it rather than destroy it so i just take extra care I'll flip the watch over and we're almost finished. So I'm now just finalizing the disassembly. So we've got the, the keyless works and the motion works here, which is, is quite simple. And you can see I've got all the components laid out, as I mentioned earlier. And that's it. We Disassembly is complete, but I'm not going to pat myself on the back just yet because the disassembly is actually the easiest part. I'll prepare the watch for cleaning, but what I will do first is I'll put the balance wheel back into the watch just because I don't want to damage it. Um, this is one of them three components I mentioned is very delicate and the last thing I need 
is to take it and put it into a basket and damage the pivot just because it's wrestling about. So I've seen many people do this and I, I, I like the idea. It just puts it in a safe place really. Somewhere where it shouldn't get damaged. So I'll just put that back in place and it's held in place with just one, one single screw. And there we go, complete disassembly done. Now for the cleaning process and you'll see that I've got this pot on the side here that I will put all the components into. So the large components will go directly into the solution and the smaller components will go into some baskets. And what will happen is the, the cleaning is done in three stages. So you've got an initial wash, the first rinse and the second rinse. Now because of where I live, I've looked around and I've tried to get these watch cleaning solutions, the, the proper ones, but for love nor money, I couldn't get them. So my cleaning method for now is very crude. I don't have a, a watch cleaning machine. I just have an ultrasonic cleaner. And I've read around what chemicals to use and what's available where I'm actually living. And I've, had, I've heard for the first initial wash, lighter fluid is something that can be used. So just due to where I live, it's the only thing I can get. Um, as well as the, the two rinses, I'm using IPA. So I've got, I've got the first rinse and then a, a second rinse. But you must remove any components for, from the IPA rinse. You must remove anything with shellac. So the, the balance wheel and the pallet fork, you can't put them in because the IPA would dissolve the shellac and then you've, you've got another world of problems. If anyone knows how to get some watch cleaning chemicals over into, so I'm staying in Southeast Asia. If you know how to get uh, watch cleaning chemicals into Southeast Asia, I'm all ears. Because um, for love nor money, I couldn't get. I, try, I tried Amazon. I tried. I tried Cousins UK. I've tried. You name it, I've tried it. Um, could not get it. So if anyone knows a way, how? I'd be interested. Let me know. Hit me up. Another thing to mention, you, as I was talking about the cleaning process, you would have seen me initially attempt to put the... So I took the main barrel apart and got the main spring out. No problem. But trying to get it in, I did buy some main spring winders. But for some reason, the, the main spring would not catch onto the winder itself. And from what I've seen, I think it's because on, my, on the winding set that I have, the... The pivot that you put into the mainspring, it's it's not thick enough, so it just cannot catch the it cannot catch the mainspring to then wind it in. And or maybe I just don't know how to use it. That's equally possible. So in the end, I went from attempting to use that mainspring winder to then having to just manually put it back in with my with my fingers. And that is where I've stumbled across the first problem with this watch. So once I put the mainspring back in and I tried to push the cap back onto the main barrel. It just wouldn't go back on. Um, I tried and tried and tried. I used parallel things to try and compress it back into place and it just wouldn't go back on. So what I did is I went online, did a bit of reading and what I have read is for this particular movement, some movements as well, some of the main barrels are non-service items. So you're not supposed to take them apart because the main barrel is closed and pinned shut. So once you open it, once you open it up, you can't close it back. So it was a, it was a struggle, and you can see I've actually marked the top of this barrel just trying to close it. But I mean, it's a harsh lesson, um, and thankfully this isn't an expensive watch. Otherwise, it would be a painful lesson as well. But anyway, onwards and upwards, and we'll continue with the with the assembly. Here I'm using some grease, so this being a mechanical watch, you do need to grease and oil some of the components. Just because it's a mechanical watch, you've got metal on metal, and a watch being a watch, it's got rotating parts, and these parts can wear if the friction is too high. So there are some specially designed oils and greases, which might I say are not, they're not cheap. You would have thought these was a, a cheap, the the oils and the greases were easy to get and cheap items, but it's not something you can scrimp and avoid because ultimately it determines how well your your watch can run. So it's something that you must use.
Now we have the final two screws for the for the barrel bridge. We can tighten that down and then continue with the continue with the reassembly. First, I'm going to install the ratchet wheel. So this is the bigger, the bigger of the two, two wheels that we'll put back here. And this one connects directly to the, to the the barrel underneath, with a sort of a square, keyed hole. And this one is this one's a standard thread. So this one, is righty tighty. So to tighten this one up. You turn the screwdriver clockwise. This second one here, it has a shim. So this one's for the crown wheel. And this one has a shim in the middle. And the crown wheel goes on top. So this one's a smaller of the two. Um, and this one, because it's going to be going anti-clockwise, this screw is actually left-hand thread. So this one is you rotate it anti-clockwise to tighten it up. And once I once I've done that, let me just give it a check. And one thing that's happening here is I'm just trying to move the the barrel, but everything everything seems a bit jammed. Everything seems a bit seized. Um, so I'm going to just loosen off this this crown wheel screw a little bit just to see if if that could be the issue. As soon as I took a bit of tension off of the the crown wheel, I found that there was that was that was causing too much friction and, and just seizing everything up. So I'm going to take the crown wheel off once more, give it a little look. And one thing I've noticed is it goes on one way. Um, it's not bi-directional. It only goes. It's unidirectional cog because it's got a little recess. So I think what was what was happening was the the crown wheel was binding with the plate underneath. So I'll flip it over, put the screw back on, see if this solves the issue. Here we go. That's how it should look. If you rotate the cogs, they should they should move freely. They shouldn't be seizing, they shouldn't be binding on anything else. Another thing I've forgotten is I need to get the click back on um, and I can't put the click on with the ratchet wheel in place so lesson learned I've had to take the ratchet wheel off again and put the click in place and one thing I'm struggling with here is there's this tiny spring for one and I'm trying to be really careful because I don't want this thing to fly off into oblivion and never be found again but I didn't take a photo of it when I took it off so I I'm unsure how it goes back on. So this is a bit of trial and error from me. Um, I'm going to put it on in different positions just to see does it operate the click. This one, definitely not. So that's that's not right. So let me take it off again. Let me jiggle it about a bit. Another another position. Until I ultimately, I didn't get it on on camera clearly, but um, ultimately I did. I did get it into the into the correct position in the end. But yeah going forward i need to take more photographs uh or maybe even just little videos just to make sure a lot of these parts are so small they're so tiny and they only go on one way so you must remember how they go on so far not so painful we are getting there and we've got the main the main bridge to go back on the top here, it's the one that I said has got the three, three pivots, the ones that are not jeweled. Um, so them, t them three recesses you can see in a triangular shape in the middle. Um, that's where the pivots are going to going to align. So the main job now is to make sure that the the pivots of the cogs underneath do align with them with them holes. Just to, just so when we clamp this down and screw it down, it doesn't bend them and damage them.
in order to make sure that these pivots are in place we've got this it's called a loop so it's a magnifier so I'm looking through it um, just trying to see if them pivots are lined up uh, and I'll do a few checks so I'll push a few of the cogs just to make sure everything's lined up and everything is is moving in and everything's connected really what I do have is I I did buy a um, I did buy a microscope but the clamp uh, the frame for it didn't come in time so instead of using the loop another way of doing it is I could have used the micro microscope um, and I could have shown it on the video but that'll be for the next one for the next video I'll have the microscope I'll have some microscope footage but for this one I had to do the the old the old-fashioned way just use the loop just to make sure everything was lined up but now everything screwed down I'll give it a check and we can see if I transfer the power from the ratchet wheel we can see the escape wheel rotating also so it means that everything's connected uh, and everything is everything is where it should be so all there is left now for this side of the watch at least we've got the pallet fork which again I'm going to use the loop for because this one is one of them three components that are ultra ultra fragile uh, so we need to make sure that it is in place and that when we put this bridge on the pivots line up with their respective holes just to make sure we don't damage them pivots because if them pivots get damaged this watch would be a goner unless we replace that unless we replace the pallet fork or we repair the pallet fork but once everything lined up tighten that one down and we'll just give the pallet fork a little flip just to see if the just to see if the power goes through to the just to see if the power goes through to the pallet fork and it all looks okay so we can flip the watch over and get back to reassembling the, the keyless works the keyless works actually I like this part this it's like light at the end of the tunnel so you know the watch is almost almost reassembled and the keyless works there's everything in the keyless works is quite robust so um, the pressure's off on the keyless works everything's quite robust so there's no there shouldn't well, touch wood there shouldn't be any reason for it, for anything to be damaged or anything to line up with fine precision with them pivots going through the holes so the keyless works quite a nice thing to work on actually So I've installed the, the winding pinion and the clutch wheel, so they go in, as well as using some some grease because these are high friction high friction parts. So you can imagine every day you're winding this watch up to give it the energy it needs, and that energy is going direct through these through these components. So you do need the um, you need some heavy heavier duty grease on these on these parts just to make sure they don't wear excessively over the years especially this watch being from the from the late 50s so grease would be would be crucial really Here we have the intermediate wheels, the, the yoke going on now. And what I am thinking is, I'll install everything. And then this spring, this tiny spring, I'm going to put this on last. I don't want to put this on first. Because there's a, there's more risk of it flying, flying free. And never to be found again. Which would go from being being enjoyable watch service to one to forget so I'm going to use this 
I've got a little cocktail stick. I'm going to use that just to secure it in position whilst I click it down into place. And as soon as I know it looks okay, I'm going to get the plate on top as soon as possible just to make sure that spring can't fly off and ruin my day. This screw also to, to hold down this plate is so small. Um, I had to file down my screwdriver just to to be able to unscrew it when we did, did the disassembly. That screw is so fine. Now I'm looking for the final parts. But this just goes to show how small some of these components are. So they're very difficult to see. So this was this was the screw, one of them small screws I said I was looking for, and my I could barely see it in the pot. It was right in front of me, but it was so small I could barely see it. But that plate now back in position, so I can check the keyless works just to make sure everything is working as should, everything connected, and clean up some of the excess grease that I put on. So now, the moment of truth. The balance wheel back on, just to see if this thing will fire up again. Um, it run before, so unless I've broken something, it should run again. But the question is how well. So we saw the original readings weren't so great. So now let's get this balance wheel back on. Hopefully, this thing will fire up again. which it does that's a sigh of relief so at least it's running it's running pretty slow there but i think it just it just needed a bit of power but there she is back together so we are almost done we are almost there um we'll put this one this wheel back on this little spacer and then we can get the then we can get the dial in place the dial was actually very clean for the age of this watch, this the watch was clean in general. The dial looks untouched, which we can see here. I've done nothing to that dial. Um, that is 70 years strong and still looking brand new. Now we'll put the the hands on. So to put the hands on, I've I've only got these manual these manual pushers. I don't know what the tool's called, um, but there's different sizes. Just need to line up the, the hour hand, press it down, because these are just friction fit. Um, then line up the minute hand, and the same thing, press that one down. I'll give them a little clean with this green putty stuff. It's called Rodico, it's a horrible name, um, but it is what it is. And then the second hand. So the second hand is quite a nice one. Put it into position and we can see it running to know that it is seated in the right place. And I'll just give it a little a light push down. Now I'm just going to give the hands a little setting check. So I'll give them a little wind round through different positions just to make sure they don't lose, lose time. And there we have it. So once we check the watch back on the time grapher that looks all right that didn't look too bad but the amplitude is good the beat error is very good and this watch is running a lot better than it did when we when we initially looked at it so i'm happy and that is the end of the video so i hope you enjoyed that we managed to get this watch running better than it was before so success thanks for coming along and if you enjoyed this one stay tuned for the next one